The Roy Rogers Radio Show. Yes, folks, it's the Roy Rogers Radio Show for the whole family. Adventure, suspense, mystery, and music. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, the Mellow Men, and an all-star cast. And now I'm here to greet you with the song and the story of Roy and Dale. Look up and see a yellow sky. Sparrows are all afraid to fly. Not a breeze, not a breath. Every single tell of death tornado. Well, good evening, folks. Greetings again to the whole family. That song, Tornado, is a brand new number written by Dale. I think she got the idea for the melody and the words a few days after we returned from Dodge City, Kansas, where we appeared in the fiesta and rodeo. We enjoyed the trip and appearing in the show, and seeing some of the famous old American landmarks in Dodge City. On our way back, the weather took a turn, and before long, it clouded up and started to rain. How far to the next town, Roy? About 20 miles. Centerville. Hey, let's stop for lunch, Roy. I'm hungry. Okay, Pat. You know, we better get some gas, too. The gate says empty. How about the music, Roy? Sure, I'll turn on the radio. Boy, it sure is clouding up in the east. Say, that looks like a gas station up ahead, Pat. Yeah, I'll pull in. Well, let's stretch your legs a little. How about some Coke? Ooh, I don't see the attendant. Probably around back. I'll get him. You know, I'll take a look at Bullet and Trigger in the trailer. Okay, Pat. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention to a special announcement from the Weather Bureau. Attention, Centerville area. Warning. Atmospheric conditions in the Centerville area may result in the formation of a tornado. I repeat. Warning, Centerville area. Atmospheric conditions may result in the formation of a tornado. Well, what do you know? It stopped raining, just like you turned the faucet off. Roll down the window, Pat. Let's have some fresh air. Okay. Hmm, that's funny. What? Well, there's no breeze. Look at the trees. Dead still. You know, I can remember once back... Pat, look out! Well, now, where do you suppose all them heifers came from? Looks like they broke through that fence. Come on, you mangy critters. Get out of the way. Well, take it easy, Pat. Those cows are nervous. They might stampede. Here comes someone, Roy. Where? Oh, the rider. He's probably trying to round up the cattle. Ladies and gentlemen. Turn that off, Pat. Okay. Hey, mister. Howdy, folks. Sorry to hold you up like this. Do you need any help? No, thanks. I'll get them herded across the road in a minute. Don't understand it. Never acted like this before. They sure look scared. Yes, sir. That's it, exactly. I was afraid I was going to stampede for a minute. I can hardly breathe. Are all the windows open, Pat? Every last one of them. That air sure is heavy. Oh, at last. Welcome to Centerville. Huh. Ain't much of a town. There ain't a soul on the street. Yeah. I wonder what's the matter. I sure hope they got a restaurant. I'm so dead We plain. know, Pat. I'm hungry. There's a restaurant over there. Where? Across the street. See where that car's parked? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll turn around. Yeah, I guess it's okay to make a U-turn here. <laughs> there ain't no traffic. Pull up behind that other car. Okay. Well... That car's even farther away from home than we are. Oh, would you look at that? What? Those birds. We almost ran over them. They didn't move. Where? Right there. See? They're just sort of walking. It's kind of slow. Hmm. Roy, I don't like this. There's something wrong. 
Well, as far as I'm concerned, the main thing that's wrong is that I ain't had no lunch and I'm hungry. Okay, let's eat. The restaurant seems to be open. Not a soul on the street. Maybe those men in the cafe can tell us something. Well, let's sit down and order first, huh, Roy? All right. I'll wait you in a minute, folks. Thank you. Let's see now. Shall I have ham and eggs or bacon and eggs? Or maybe some hotcakes. Or maybe ham and bacon and eggs. And cereal. And... I know it. I'm going to ask you. Michael, come back here. Well, hello, Sonny. How are you? Aren't you Roy Rogers? That's right. It is, Daddy. See, I told you. What's your name? Mike. Michael. What... You, uh, you'll have to excuse him, folks. Uh, Mike, I told you not to bother these people. He's not bothering us, Mr. Uh, uh... Uh, it's not polite to disturb people, Mike. Come along now. But I just want his autograph, Daddy. Please, Daddy, can I get his autograph? Sure you can, Mike. I'll write it on this menu for you. Gee, have you got Trigger with you? <laughs> we sure have, Mike. He's in the trailer outside. Those bullets. Gee, can I see them? Can I please? Of course you can, Mike. Just as soon as... Uh, we... we haven't time, Mike. Come along now. We have a long drive ahead of us. And... But, Daddy, it won't take but a minute. Mike, I said come along. You certainly have come a long way. Are you going home now, Mr... Uh, Mr... Uh, yes. Yes, we, we're, we're going home. Home? But, Daddy, you... Mike, said... please. Now take your autograph and let's go. Uh, you you folks have been very kind. Please excuse my little boy for bothering you. Oh, he hasn't bothered us at all. Oh, uh, this is Dale Evans and Pat Brady. How do you do? Howdy. And you're Mr... Uh, how do you do? And now, if you'll excuse us, we really must be going. Thank you again. Could I have a picture, Mr. Rogers? Can I have a picture of you and Dale and Pat? And Trigger and Bullet and... Oh, Mike, I'm sorry, but we don't have any pictures with us. We could send you some when we get home. Gee, would you? Sure, what's your address? One seven seven four nine. I'm afraid that wouldn't reach him, Mister Rogers. You see, we're moving. I don't have the exact street address. But Daddy, you said... when we get settled, you can write to Mister Rogers and give him our new address. Now, for the last time, Mike, come on. It sure was an unsociable cut, wasn't it? Yeah. Hey, where's that waitress? I'm so hungry, guy, I could eat a prairie chicken, feathers and all. Uh, excuse me, folks. My name's Wilson, uh, Bert Wilson. I'm with the Centerville Weekly. I'm glad How to you know do? you, Mr. Wilson. Nice to meet you. Uh, well, it isn't often that we have a celebrity here in town. I'd like to get an interview. Well, we're just passing through on our way back from Dodd City. Oh, well, you sure didn't pick a very I'm good day for us. I'm keep you we... waiting, folks. Have you decided what you want? I sure have. Ham and bacon and eggs and cereal and toast oh, and milk I'm and jam sorry, and... Sir, but we don't have anything but cold sandwiches today. Cold sandwiches? Well, yes, you uh, The fact of the matter is, uh, we've had a warning about Roy. a... Roy? Yeah? That man, the one with the little boy, he can't seem to get his car started. Oh? Well, come on, Pat. Let's see if we can help him. But, Roy... It's probably just... a vapor lock. Hold it, mister. You'll just run down your battery doing that. Well, the best thing to do is to blow into the gas tank. Take a look under the hood, Pat. Okay. I I can't understand it. The car was running perfectly when I stopped. Yeah. Well, you see. I... Hmm. But uh, what's the matter? Louisiana plate V one six seven five nine two. What? There was a bulletin came over the teletype this morning. Everything seems to be okay under the hood, Roy. It's probably a vapor lock, like you said, Mister Wilson. Hey, Mister. Yes. What's your name? Well, I don't see why that's any of your business. Maybe not. And again, maybe it is. What's the matter, Mr. Wilson? I'm not sure. I'll have to check first. But I have an idea that this man hey, is... What's that? Roy, look! They weren't kidding. It's here. Take cover, folks. Come on, don't just stand there. There's a basement below the cafe. Hurry. Never mind your car, man. Grab your boy and take cover. No, I'm getting out of here. You're taking cover. Look, man, look, that's not a moving picture scene. That's a tornado, a real live, honest to goodness tornado. Now get out of that car before I drag you out. Daddy! It's all right, Mike. Don't be afraid. Come on. Dale, 
Bill. Pat, you all right? Okay, Roy. Yeah. How about you, Roy? I'm all right. Mr. Wilson? I guess we were all lucky. How's our secretive friend? I'm not hurt. Neither is my boy. Thanks to Mr. Rogers. Roy, what about Trigger and Bullet? The trailer? Well, it's still standing out there. Let's take a look, Pat. Right. Oh, this place certainly is a mess. Yes, and we didn't get the full impact. Well, I'd better get over to the office and put a teletype on the... Oh. What's the matter? Janet. Who? My fiancée. The girl who waits on tables here. Where is she? What? Well, I don't know. Maybe she made it to the basement. Come on. Janet! Janet! Dr. Winston. Dr. Winston. Are you speaking to me? Yes, I was. Well, then I'm afraid you've made a mistake. My name isn't Winston, and I'm not a doctor. Mr. Wilson, over here, quick. Okay, have it your way. Just don't try to leave town. I doubt if you could anyway. The road's probably blocked. Mr. Wilson, hurry. Coming. She's under that pile of debris. Janet. I think she's pinned down. Well, the animals are all okay, but the town's been hit pretty bad. Roy! Yes? What's the matter? The girl, the waitress, she's under those beans. She's hurt. Pat, you too, whatever your name is. Come on, everybody give me a hand. Let's lift this stuff off of Janet? Janet, can you hear me? It's no use, Mr. Wilson. She's unconscious. She needs a doctor right away. How many are there in town? Just one. Only he isn't in town. He went to Kansas City for a medical convention. Well, let's try the phone. Maybe some of the lines are up. There's an easier way, Mr. Rogers. We've got a doctor right here in this cafe. Really? Yes, a mysterious stranger in the little bowl. I'm positive his name's Winston. Dr. Winston. Well, let's have a talk with you. Stay here with the girl, Dale. Pat, find a phone and see if you can get through to Dodge City. Right. Dr. Winston, you've got to help us. How many times must I tell you my name isn't Winston? Daddy, I... Oh, you're quiet, Mike. Now, just lie there on the table. You've had a bad shot. Mr. Wilson, why do you think this man is Dr. Winston? Do you know him? No, I've never seen him before. But there was a teletype on the wire service this morning. It described this Dr. Martin Winston. About 5 feet 11, between 40 and 45, traveling with his 9-year-old son in a black 52 sedan with Louisiana license plate. Well, the description sure fits. What about this Dr. Winston? Why was a teletype sent out about him? He's wanted by the police. For murder. No telephones, Roy. All the lines are down. Boy, you should see the town. It's wrecked. Roy, Mr. Wilson, Janet's coming out of it. Janet? Janet, are you all right? Can you sit up? No. No, I... I can't move. You better not touch her, Wilson. Janet. Don't worry, darling. I'll get help. Winston, you've got to help her. You've got to. If you really are a doctor, it's your duty. Many people are injured in this town. How can you stand by and let them suffer? Don't tell me about suffering. I've seen more suffering than you'll ever know. That poor girl's on the verge of hysteria, Roy. She can't move her legs. She's paralyzed. Winston, I'll make a deal with you. Help Janet not. I'll forget I ever saw that teletype. You can leave town afterward. I won't try to stop you. I'm afraid I can't be a party to that, Mr. Wilson. If this man is wanted for murder, we'll have to hold him. If he's a doctor, his conscience will have to guide him. You mean he's a doctor and he won't help he denies being a Dr. Dale. But I know he is. He fits the description perfectly. Let's put it this way, stranger. You're not going to leave town in any event. If you are Dr. Winston, you'll be arrested as soon as the authorities get here. So you aren't solving anything by refusing to help that girl. Well, everything's conspired to prevent my escape. Even a tornado, an act of God. Maybe, maybe I was wrong in what I did. Perhaps there is a higher force. Perhaps I can save a few lives to make up for the one I took. Yes, I'll see what I can do for the girl. Well, 
doctor? It's difficult to tell. She didn't respond to a direct command to move her toes. Her uh, back may be broken. And on the other hand, it could be that the nerve is pinched. I suppose it is. What should be done? Yeah, she should be operated on as soon as possible. If the spinal nerve is pinched, the blood clot and the bone fragments must be removed and the misalignment corrected. Is there a hospital in town? Yes, a small. Do we dare move her? Well, we might manage it if we're extremely careful. Yeah, those uh, those boards might serve as a makeshift stretcher for us. Try, Doctor. You've got to try. On the other hand, if it's the back... Uh, well, well, let's try one more thing before we move on. Uh, you talk to her, Mr. Wilson. Uh, Miss Evans, would you get me some matches, please? Surely. Hi, Janet. How do you feel? Just... Sort of numb. I... Can't feel anything. My waist down. Try to relax, dear. Pat, if the doctor decides to move us, we can carry her to the hospital in the trailer. Okay. I'll go get the animals out. All right. Here are the matches, doctor. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, Mr. Wilson, will you keep talking to us? Uh, have you decided where we're going on a honeymoon? Honeymoon? Oh, dear. How about New York? <laughs> or oh, Paris? Just shall we be old fashioned and make it Niagara Falls? Uh, yeah, there's no reaction to heat. Uh, uh, Mr. Wilson, I want to try one more test. Okay, Doctor. What is it? Uh, w- would you step over here for a moment? Thank you. You keep an eye on her toes. Her, her toes? Yes, that's right. Especially the big toe of her right foot. Okay. That sounds kind of funny. Now you just remember. Watch very carefully. Bill? Right here, Janet. You're where I can see you. In, in a minute. I uh, gather from what you just said that you and this young lady are engaged to be married, Mr. Wilson. That, that's right, Doctor. Well, she's a lovely girl. But uh, your hair is certainly a mess, Janet. Uh, here, let me comb it for you. Huh? Well, thank you, Doctor. Uh, Mr. Wilson, uh, you won't mind if just for a little while your uh, wife is... Bald headed, will you? Oh, 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 what is he doing? What? Well, Mr. Wilson, it moved, Doctor. Her big toe moved. What does that mean, Doctor? It means that her back isn't broken. The nerve is pinched, not severed. We have a good chance that she'll be all right if we can get her to a hospital and operate as soon as possible. <laughs> They sure been in there a long time, Roy. I don't know. Is my daddy operating, Mr. Rogers? Yes, Mike. He's a swell doctor, Mr. Rogers. He'll fix that lady up. I'm sure he will. Now, why don't you wait for us outside, Mike? We'll let you know when your daddy's through. Okay. Any news, sir? Not yet, Mr. Wilson. Dale promised to let us know as soon as the operation's over. Dale's acting as a nurse. I just came from the office. They repaired one phone line. We're in touch with Dodge City. They're sending doctors and ambulances. Good. And, uh, I also got some more information about Dr. Winston. Yes? He... Well, it isn't exactly what we thought. You mean he ain't a murderer? Yes, I suppose. In the eyes of the law, he is. At least he'll have to stand trial and... Well, it'll be up to a jury to decide. What exactly did he do? He gave an overdose of a sedative to a patient who was suffering from an incurable disease. It's called a mercy killing. I see. Well, thank you very much, Miss Evans. You're a splendid nurse. And you're a splendid doctor. That operation was brilliant. Miss Evans, doctor, how is Janice? Resting comfortably. Barring unforeseen complications in time, we have every reason to expect a full recovery. Thank God. Hmm. 
Yes, Mr. Wilson, that's... That's exactly who we must thank. I don't realize now that I was wrong in what I did. I not only violated my medical oath, I overstepped my bounds as a mere human being, a mortal. I took it on myself to decide whether a person should live until he's taken or die in order to avoid suffering. And that is not a question for mortals to decide. No matter how well a person may be, there is always a chance for a miracle. There is divine providence in everything, Doctor. Even in the fury of the wind and the conditions that cause a tornado. It isn't for us to judge, only to have faith and belief. Are we going home now, Daddy? Really going home? Yes, Mike. Yes, Mike, we're going home. Uh, uh, we'll be downstairs in the office, Mr. Wilson, when the authorities arrive. Come along, Mike. The Lord works in mysterious ways with wonders to perform. And, folks, that's the story of a tornado and of some people who live through it to become better human beings. Oh, say, hate the peaceful sky. He's waiting for the chance to fly a tornado. Tornado makes your blood run cold. Tornado once can make you own a tornado. And see a yellow sky. Sparrows are all afraid to fly. Not a breeze, not a breath. Everything is still a death tornado. Tornado. Uneasy cattle on the range. Old Chef is acting mighty strange. In the west, a fearful sight. Cellar if you can. Faces whiten like a shroud. Here it comes a yellow flower. Devil cloud is gone. You wonder how you can go on. Buildings that were once a town scattered all along the ground tornado. Once you see it, mister, you won't forget a twister. is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.